Okay, so it's all of our aims when we start trading or when we launch a business to make tens of thousands of dollars from this venture. I've gone through the process, I've gone through the full journey from zero to multi six figures within a matter of years. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to get to your first 1K per month, then how to scale that to 10K per month, from 10K to 50K per month, and then how to generate passive income, invest your money into other businesses, other investments, the whole process from zero to 50K per month. And I am quite qualified to actually talk about this topic of making 10, 20, 30, 40, even 50K months, because if you are a subscriber of the channel, you would have seen that I've had numerous days over 30,000, even some days being $55,000 in a single day. This obviously isn't something that is achievable within the first few months of your trading. It's obviously possible, but I wouldn't say it's something that you should actually expect when you are getting into trading or getting into business in general. You should set your expectations lower than what you see on my channel or other people's channels that are at a similar level, because we've obviously been in this industry for years. So we're years ahead of where you possibly are at the moment. And that is why we are getting these massive profit months and why you are not currently. Let's say you're making 5K per month at the moment. That's great. You might want to skip ahead to the 10 to 20K per month phase. It all depends on which income level you're actually currently at and the one you're actually looking to get to, to which part of the videos fit you perfectly. If you're looking to learn basically the whole spectrum, maybe something that I'd say I'm making 1K per month could help you at making 10K per month. So it does all depend on your lifestyle, your mindset, your personality, and the ways you are actually interested in making money. This is all going to determine which steps you actually use the most and which ones are most effective for you. And I recently talked about this on Twitter. I said, if anyone I know asked me if they should get into trading or ask me to teach them how to trade, I'll tell them to not bother. I'll simply say, do not bother getting into trading. It's not worth it. This video is obviously going to touch a lot on trading and how to make a lot of money from trading. So you're probably thinking, why is he not teaching another way of making money? Well, I'm not going to teach something that I'm not experienced in. So I'm not gonna teach you about drop shipping, Amazon FBA, or TikTok marketing. You know, I'm not gonna teach about that sort of stuff. Although it probably has a higher success rate than trading. As you know, trading is a very, very difficult business to actually make money in long term. But it's the one that I have experience with and I've gone from zero to, you know, 100k a year plus in payouts from these prop firms. So we're going to talk about a lot of that in this video coming up. So you've probably seen in the title, why did I say 20k per month? Why didn't I say 10k per month? Why didn't I say 5k per month? Because obviously if you're making 5k per month, you're making $60,000 a year. That's a, a decent salary. Why didn't I say 10k per month? Because then you're making $120,000 per year. And again, that's an even better salary. And you're probably in the top 10% of earners if you're actually making that. And the reason is a lot of people actually will get to that 5k or that 10k amount and they get complacent. I mean, you can live a really, really good life, but you're always going to be thinking about making money. Often people will inflate their lifestyle when they first make over 5k or first make 10k dollars in a month. And this means that then they have to continue making that amount, but their lifestyle is slowly going up, their expenses are going up and they're not putting in as much work because they've reached over 100k salary or they're starting making over 10k per month and it can be downhill from there on you'll see a lot of people notably people that flex lifestyle on social media they rent the cars they go to dubai they do all this lifestyle stuff but in two years time you won't see them living the same lifestyle a lot of these people then turn to scamming they turn to things that aren't good ways of making money just to afford the lifestyle that they've actually promoted on Instagram and that everyone actually thinks they live. So to continue living that lifestyle, they have to go to those sort of ways of making money. So if you want to do it properly, you're going to want to maintain the same lifestyle unless you have you know, six, 12 months of money saved up before you even go on this journey. If you're looking to become a full-time trader, you definitely need to have at least 12 months of money saved up because even if it's just six months, you could have a bad streak in trading and end up with no money end up with no profits after those six months. And this is entirely possible. So at least 12 months of expenses saved up in a savings account, not an account that it takes two weeks to actually access. You want it easily accessible so that if anything does go wrong, if you have to pay a bill, it's there for you to access. That is the key. It will also alleviate a lot of pressure from your trading 
because as we know pressure does create bad environments to trade which can lead to emotional decisions which you aren't looking to have in your trading can lead to loss of profits or losses and no profits which isn't ideal you know when i first made 10k in a month i think i was 17 years old and at that age it was it was a lot of money you know i didn't know anyone else my age making that money personally you kind of feel like okay i've made it now you know i've made 10k per month i've made ten thousand pounds you know for me it was pounds because i'm in the uk so that would probably be you know 13 14 thousand dollars so even more um and you know it was a great feeling when i actually first made that 10k in a month i felt richer than when I was making 40, 50K in a month. And the reason behind this is once you reach 10K, you can pretty much do whatever you want. You can go on nice holidays. You can buy nice clothes. You can pretty much buy or do anything you want quite comfortably because you have $10,000. You know, it's, it's a large amount of money. Whereas if you're making 40, 50K a month, you can do exactly the same things because you still have a lot of money, obviously, but you're doing the exact same work. Especially in trading, it's very scalable and you don't have to buy more stock. You don't have to try and reach more customers. It's, it's not like that. All you have to do is scale your capital. So to go from 10 to 50 to 100K per month, the only change you technically have to make is more capital. You obviously feel the differences because you're seeing larger numbers on a screen, but the actual lifestyle kind of feels exactly the same. So. In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to actually get to that next level and not just make it so that, oh, I've made 10K, I can do whatever I want now, I'm happy. For a lot of people, that could be the case and they might be comfortable with that actually happening in their life. You know, if you want to live a simple life, you know, a minimalistic life, you can easily work for a few years making 10K per month and then be set for life. If you buy a house or you're, you then don't have any mortgage payments, you don't have to pay rent, your expenses can be very, 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 very low. If you have a partner as well, that will minimize the overall costs. And if you're making 10K per month, you know, you're know you living very, very nicely. You know, someone making 10K per month after all expenses in a year could still be more well off than someone making 50K per month. It just depends on your expenses at the end of the day. So we're going to move on to your first 1K. Let's say you're starting at zero, or let's say you're making a couple hundred pounds per month. How do you actually get to that first 1K? and what are the steps you should actually take. This step is mainly for beginners or people that have made zero from trading. You should already be working a job, whether it be full-time or part-time at this stage, because if you have zero income, you can't make money from trading. It's as simple as that. Trading requires money to make money. So if you don't have any money, you can't make any money. And let's say you do get to the stage where you're making 500 pounds or a thousand pounds per month from trading. This is not going to replace any job you have. I feel like a lot of people they jump into trading full time way too quickly. Like we mentioned previously, if you don't have those 12 months saved up and you have no income, how do you expect to actually pay for everything? You just won't be able to. So if you're making 1K per month, don't quit your job. You won't be able to afford to live. If you are making 1K per month, that is when you should focus on increasing and scaling after that point. This will merely make a side hustle at best because 1K per month, it's only 12K per year, it's under the minimum wage. So if you're making under minimum wage from your trading, don't take it full time. Only take it full time if on average, you're making double what your salary is normally. So let's say for example, your salary is $2,000 per month, and now you're making four, four and a half thousand dollars per month from trading. Maybe you should consider taking it full time, it gives you more time to focus and then scaling the accounts can be a lot easier. But if you're only making 1K, and your salary is 2K, what's the point in actually quitting? I don't think that is a good decision. and It's not one I would personally make myself. And during this phase, the reason why I said you should have income or money saved up is because you're only going to want to be trading with personal funds. This is different to what a lot of people mention online. And I've said previously that everyone should be trading with prop firms, but I feel like if you haven't even made a thousand pounds profit from trading, then you shouldn't be going into prop firms. The main reason for this Prop firms, you're trading with a large amount of money. Although it is demo accounts, you're still seeing the numbers, you're still seeing the large amounts of drawdown profits on the screen, which can definitely affect you as a trader. It can affect you emotionally, and it can affect your decisions when you're in trades, when you're exiting trades, when you're entering trades, all of this can be affected by the large numbers on the screen. If you haven't actually seen four figures profit yet, or four figures loss, then you won't be able to handle this. It's always better to take things slow and steady rather than jump straight into the deep end 
because the markets will most likely drown you. And, you know, I am always more impressed by people that can trade personal accounts long term because it takes more skill than trading with a prop firm. With a personal account, if you go 10% in drawdown, you can get out of that. With a prop firm, you can't. You have to get a new account over again and then trade it. So with a personal account, you have freedom. You can trade your strategy exactly how you want to trade it. And this can allow you to make profits and grow the account. A lot of traders, they'll buy a prop firm challenge, they'll blow it, they'll think they're not a good trader, but maybe they just bought a challenge and started a losing streak exactly at that point. You know, you can't time these things. Given that that could be the case, with a personal account, if you are profitable for months, if not years, then this can show you that you are potentially ready for a prop firm, but it's not something that you should jump into straight away. The reason why I said you should trade personal funds before going to a prop firm, let's say you're trading with an account of $5,000. You saved up money, you've got 12 months set aside, you've been trading with a demo account or you've been trading with a small account, but now you want to take it up to a next level, you're trading with $5,000 in your account. You should only look to move on to prop firms if you've made over $1,000 profit. The main reason behind this, you're going to want to obviously start small with prop firms. You're only going to, going to want to start with a 25K or a 50K account. The reason behind this, again, like I said, the large numbers on the screen, you're definitely going to want to scale up rather than putting all your profits into a 200k or even a 400k account it'll be a lot more detrimental on your emotions if you actually fail a 400k then you lose two thousand dollars worth of your profits of your personal money of those months and months of trading profits in one go rather than if you take a 25k account not entirely sure how expensive that is maybe a couple hundred dollars max or maybe a hundred dollars max if that blows it's not the end of the world and you know you can afford to actually lose that. In trading, if you can't afford to lose it, don't take the risk. So let's say you're actually making $1,000 per month from your personal account. You start at $5,000, you make five, 10% per month, which is around you know, $500 per month, and you scale it up, you keep compounding your account. Obviously, the best way to actually grow an account is through compounding. So let's do a few months of simulation here first month 10 percent profit you know we're going to use round numbers because it is easier to calculate and easier to show you the results i obviously wouldn't expect you to make 10 percent every single month because this is entirely unrealistic but we're just going to use it for the example first month 10 percent profit which is 500 dollars. the account is now at five thousand five hundred dollars next month 10 percent profit but because you're risking one percent of that five thousand five hundred you've now made $550 profit. So now your account's at $6,050. Then this will continue growing every single month. The wins will get bigger every single month. Your income will get bigger if you are consistently profiting around the same amount. There's obviously going to be losing streaks. You have to expect this. But we're looking like an average over the whole year. This will get to a point where you're making 1K per month. And this is when you should think about taking some of those profits to actually invest in a prop firm. Taking it from the profits, it does mean that you're not eating into your initial balance which a lot of people this can be kind of a barrier let's say you see people on social media that are failing prop firm challenges oftentimes this is because they lose the first trade on their account which then means they're below 100k for example they're now at 99k and now they're trying to just get above 100k again so that leads them to emotional decisions to try and get above that 100k and trades they wouldn't normally take so if you're actually in profit, maybe at 104k and you lose one trade, it's fine. You're now at 103k. It's not the end of the world. Whereas if you go down below the initial balance, you're now in drawdown, it can be quite difficult. So we're putting this into perspective with our personal accounts. Let's say that 5k is now at 7k. You spend $500 on a challenge. You're still at 1.5k profit. You're not eating into your initial investment, which means any loss or account you blow is just a loss on your trading balance technically if you are looking um, at it that way moving on to the next phase which is one to 10k per month so you've reached your first one thousand dollars in a month from trading your personal account and now you're looking to take it to the next level you're looking to take that step to ten thousand dollars per month you know the the goal we're all looking for when we actually start trading we see it advertised on social media ten thousand dollars in a day ten thousand dollars in one trade and you know, we want to replicate this. So how are you going to do it? A lot of people will tell you, if you wanna make 10K per month, you have to get funded with a million dollars in capital, $2 million in capital. You have to scale 10 different accounts. This will simply overwhelm you. You won't be able to handle it. So 
my recommendation is to trade one account and focus on that one account and getting consistent payouts from it. People will say, oh, well, I need a large account then. But this isn't the case. If you're using a personal account, if you're using your funded account as well, side by side, this can be quite simple. Let's say, as we mentioned previously, you're making $1,000 per month from your, your, your personal trading account. You decide to invest $1,000 into prop firms, which can buy you $200,000 account. By just trading this one account, if you make 5% per month, which again is very, very good results, that will total to 60% in a year. That is amazing. You know, if I can make 60% per year consistently, that'd be amazing. And this means that you'd be making $100,000 in prop firm payouts just from that one funded account. So what you're going to want to do is the best way to actually do this is to copy trade. I know I said that managing multiple accounts can be quite difficult, but if you are managing your personal account and a challenge account, or your personal account and a funded account, it can be a lot easier. The main reason behind this is you're used to trading your personal account. That's why we did phase one when we're just trading our personal account. We're used to trading it. It's the norm for us now. And we're used to seeing the amounts of drawdown we're in, the amounts of profit, and there's no difference in our emotions. You need to sign up to a copy trader tool. There are many different ones around. A lot of them are very, very simple to use as well, but make sure they actually allow you to use the brokers and the platforms you're currently using. A lot of different platforms in the prop firm industry right now, so make sure they do actually allow the prop firm you are going to choose. You buy the challenge and then you link both accounts, the personal account as the master, the slave account as the prop firm, and then you are ready to go. You're going to want to trade the personal as a master because like I just mentioned, you're used to trading it. A lot of people, when they go to the next level of wealth or they're looking to take their trading to the next level, they'll often overcomplicate everything. The saying that goes around, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. This is entirely true with your trading strategy and your risk management, your trade management, everything should remain the same, whether you are making 1K per month or 10K per month. So that's why we're going to use the exact same strategy from 1K to 10K. We're just adding an account on the slave one, but we're not even seeing that account. We're not even seeing the trades active on that account. You're going to want to obviously check the accounts running smoothly, the trades are actually being placed, the limits are being placed, the stop loss and take profit orders are actually correctly working. And this is good to check, but you're not going to want to consistently be opening your phone, trying to manage the positions on the 200K account because this can lead to, again, emotional decisions. You're trading on the personal account exactly how you were before. The months and months prior to actually purchasing this prop firm account, you were trading on your personal. You were making consistent profit that gave you confidence that you were ready to purchase a prop firm. So why now would you change because the account is larger? This is going to be an easy way for you to fail. So what you should do, trade exactly the same on your personal, even if you only make four, five percent per month. I say only, but that is a large amount, but to pass a prop firm, you obviously need to make eight percent. So maybe it takes you two months to pass. This is completely fine. And then a lot of the prop firms now have no time limit. So you can take two months to pass. You can take three months to pass. Completely fine. There's no rush in trading. We're looking at the long-term goals of our trading, not the short term. The short term will lead to losses. So now you're trading your personal. That is growing. That is great. You're making profits. The challenge is now growing. You pass phase one. You then pass phase two. And now you're on the funded stage. And this is where you should just focus on getting payouts. We're not going to focus on this stage at trying to make 20, 30, 40,000 per month in prop firm payouts because that can come later. In this stage, we're just looking to make, you know, 200K account. If you make four five percent per month, which is entirely doable with 1% risk, you can have a one to three and a one to two and you've made 5%. And then you are going to look to deposit this into your personal account. Obviously you have to allow for taxes and any expenses you may have outside of trading, but at this stage, you are going to still be working a job because you're technically still at that 1K mark from trading because you haven't actually received any payouts yet. You're going to want to still be working in your job and not quit too early to then spend more time with the charts because that can also be quite dangerous. The more time on the charts, the more likely you are to actually enter trades when they don't fit your plan. And also if you get one payout, your ego can go through the roof. You don't want to then quit your job, have a massive ego, over trade, trade with more confidence than you actually should have and end up losing because then you'll then have no funded account, no income, no job, and just be left with your personal trading account, which again, that's not great. 
we want income coming in regularly. So for example, the first month we make a 10K payout. The prop firm obviously takes a percentage of this, uh, usually 10%, so we're left with 9K. And then taxes, depending on which country you're in, you know, 30, 40% tax. So again, you're probably left with 5K out of this. And with this 5K, you might have expenses of 1K. So now you've got 4K. And then this 4K, you could put back into your personal account. Unless your personal account was at 7K, it's now at 11K. So you're seeing the account, the personal account is going to grow very, very quickly. Over a whole year, let's say you're depositing 4K per month, that's $48,000 that you could actually deposit into this personal account. That could then be a quarter of the size of your prop firm account. And you'll notice that you'll get used to trading with a larger account size as your personal account grows. Because it's not like jumping from 5K to 200K where the losses will be $2,000 in comparison to, you know, I don't know what risk you'd be using, but hundreds of dollars on a smaller account. So you definitely need to have this in the back of your mind, especially if you're trying to manage multiple accounts. Whereas if you enter one trade, you're then risking $10,000, $20,000 trying to pass 1 million or 2 million in prop firm capital. This can definitely lead to failure. And if you're making 4% per month on a 200K account, you're making over 100 grand a year already, which I know a lot of you watching this would be very, very happy with. 100K, you're in the top 10%. You can pretty much do whatever you want. But this is also, like I mentioned previously, where people get stuck. They get complacent. They think, oh, I've, I've made it now. And they just get lazy. It's as simple as that. They get lazy. So we're going to move on to the next phase now to take your trading from 10K per month, hopefully, to 10 to 50K per month, anywhere between that range that could be perfect for you. Ideally, 50K and above, but that is for later in the video when we talk about investing into other businesses, different investments, and again, more capital. 10 to 50K per month. This is the next level. This is when you're making upwards of half a million dollars per year at the highest stage. So we obviously all want to get to that level and majority of people watching this video hope to be at that level in the next few years. And I'm gonna tell you how to go from the 10K, you know, where we're trading with that one 200K account, compounding a personal account alongside, whilst also trading the personal account as the master. A lot of people actually get stuck at this level because, you know, they, they're making money. They want to travel, they want to spend money. They don't have the time to actually trade and improve. And this is obviously what you need to get to the next level whether it's in finance, business, any realm of improvement, you're going to have to go to the next level. You're going to have to put in more work. And this is exactly the same. If you want to go from 10K to 50K per month, this is obviously what you're going to have to do. So if you are looking to travel and spend your money, don't expect your trading to improve at all. You should probably expect it to get worse. The main reason behind this is, you know, the past year I've been traveling and trying to trade while traveling, whether you're in an airport, you can't check your trades, the different time zones affecting when you can actually look at the markets. You also have, maybe you're jet lagged, you can't wake up to check the charts. You're doing activities, you're out for meals, you're, you don't have service maybe. All these different reasons that could limit your time on the charts when you should be on the charts. So let's say you back test your strategy and you know that it's profitable if you trade this many times per month. If half of that month you're traveling and you miss half of the days, what if the half of the days you actually missed were profitable days and the ones you actually traded were losing days? This is what you have to take into account. So I feel like if you are traveling, don't trade at all, especially if you are looking to take your trading to the next level with what I'm about to tell you in the next few clips. So during this phase, you need to basically double down. At the start, you're trading with a 200K account personal as a master, this can kind of stay exactly the same, but we're going to take it to the next level. We're going to scale the amount of accounts we have. The best way to actually do this is to go with multiple different firms. And if you are in the prop firm trading industry or you follow any of the information that's actually going on right now, you'll know that a lot of firms are having issues with certain countries, with certain platforms, with certain licensing. So let's say you want to buy a million dollars worth of challenges. This isn't you know, too far-fetched because if you're making five, 10K per month already, 
then you're investing four or five K in challenges to potentially make, you know, 40, 50 K in a month. And this is a, a very, very good investment in my opinion, but you can do it one step at a time. And this is what I would advise to many people because just jumping in to a million dollars worth of challenges, you then are risking four or five K of your own personal money on these trades. It can actually affect you emotionally, which we've talked about previously, larger account sizes are affecting you emotionally. So what you're going to want to do from this stage Let's say your goal at the end of the year is to have a million in funding, which is a reasonable goal. We can talk about why it's not a really, really good goal later, but we'll just talk about that for now. So instead of just buying a million dollars worth of challenges with one or two firms, going like four or 500K for each firm, what you're going to want to do is go 200K with multiple firms or 400K with two or three firms. And the reason, the reasoning behind this is you want to diversify as much as you possibly can. The only way it could actually be a bad thing is a lot of prop firms, they have different prices. So if you are trying to pass them all at once, you're going to encounter a lot of issues. When I was actually trying to scale my prop firm accounts, you know, the amount of capital I'm actually trading, I tried to do this. I had four or five different prop firms on one copier, copying from one prop firm. So I was trading with that one prop firm is one I was used to trading, everything was perfect. And the trades I was actually taking, I look back on the copier, three of the accounts didn't even get tagged in. Three of the accounts got stopped out and the others didn't, they went to take profit. So that's why I wouldn't put all of them on the copier. You could do what you're doing with the personal account, link it over one at a time. That's why I would say it's best to pass one at a time, but it is not time efficient. And obviously every minute we're actually working on demo accounts, on challenge phases, is work we're doing to get no reward. So you're not getting paid for these challenge phases. So you're obviously going to want to pass them as quick as possible. But if it means that it's going to take you six, seven months to actually pass these challenges, then it's not ideal, especially as you could just lose the funded account to anything, any small reason, any small mistake that could possibly lose you the account. That's why I would suggest trying to pass them quickly, but also you do have the risk of the copier different spreads, different broker prices being an issue for you. But as long as you monitor it, monitor the different accounts, make sure they're getting tagged in, make sure the stop losses are relevant to the account. If that is entirely possible, <laughs> just make sure you're not missing out on setups that you should be in on all the accounts. Otherwise they will be out of sync and it's very hard to risk manage. If you have five accounts at different balances with different set rules, drawdown rules, profit targets, it can be very, very difficult to manage. So make sure you have that all in line before you actually take trades with a million dollars worth of capital on the line. The best way to actually make this sort of risk-free is by using the profits you make from your prop firm account, your initial 200K account to purchase challenges. So a little way that I feel like the best way to do it is, let's say you make 10K. So we've done all our expenses, we've got 4K left. We put 2K of that into our personal account to compound and the other 2K we buy challenges with. So this will give us around a 200K account, depending on offers, prices, and everything, and which firm you actually go with. $2,000 will get you a 200K account, minimum. A lot of the times now, with offers 40, 50% off with numerous firms, you can probably get up to 400K of funding. But for this example, let's just stick with 200K. Let's say you pass that, and now you're at 400K total. So now that 5% monthly is 20K, and then after all expenses, you're then left with eight, nine, 10 K for example. So now out of this nine K, you put four and a half into your personal account to compound. You have four and a half K left. Then you can buy another 400 K account or two 200 K accounts. And then you use this to scale up to the next level. So the ideal outcome for this sort of phase of your trading career is using your prop firm profits, a small percentage, whether it be 20, 25% of your overall profit split to invest into more challenges to eventually get more payouts from this. Let's say over the next six months or the next year, you manage to scale this every month or two, adding a 200K and then it goes up to adding a 400K. You can quite easily get to 1 million to 2 million in funding. And if you keep up making that 5% per month consistently, this can then lead to 50K profits per month. This can be great, but also you then realize, okay, my taxes are now higher. I have more expenses because I have to buy more accounts on the trade copier. Overall, you're going to make more money, but there will be challenges. You're going to encounter 
some issues when you actually start making loads of money. Um, obviously, the issues aren't bad because you're ob you're obviously making a lot of money, but you'll be losing a lot to tax. You do have the risk with a lot of prop firms that they won't pay you out. That is the only issue that you can encounter because traders, we want to make money. Prop firms, they want to make money. When the traders make money, the prop firms then don't make money. Unless you are A-booked and if you are consistently profiting, then this could actually happen and they might be likely to pay you out. But if you've only been trading a couple of months on a prop firm, the likelihood of them A-booking you and consistently paying you out, you know, 40, 50K payouts, is, is, is quite slim. So you have to be prepared for this. And this is why we diversify. Instead of buying a million and scaling up to a million or two million with one prop firm using scaling plans, we're going to go 200K of one firm, 200K of another firm, 200K of another firm. So then a 50K payout is split between five different accounts. So it's only 10K per account. So you're making 5% profit, but because it's over five accounts and not just 5% on one account, each firm's more likely to pay you out. And let's say worst case scenario, two of the five firms don't pay you that payout. You're still left with $30,000. So you're kind of covering all your bases and mitigating as much risk as you possibly can to try and get as many payouts and as much profit from these firms as you can whilst they're still offering such high profit splits and cheap challenge fees. If you're actually making profits consistently like this, you're going to scale with the scaling plan that a lot of these prop firms actually offer anyway, but I wouldn't focus on only growing your capital through scaling plans. These can take months, if not years to actually grow and you have to be trading perfectly on one account to actually grow with a scaling plan. So you can't make any mistakes. You can't blow this account. You can't buy a new one because it will completely, it will just demolish all your previous success. And then you had to start from zero. So this isn't the best way to do it. The best way, just let it happen naturally and don't focus on having these requirements to actually reach a scaling plan that could add pressure onto your trading. Just like we said with all the other things that can add pressure. When you're actually making, you know, upwards of 40, $50,000 per month, this is when you can start making your money work for you. And this does bring us on to the next phase, which is building passive income. We've all heard online, passive income is the only way to get wealthy. You know, if you're still working and your money isn't working for you, you're not truly wealthy. If you're not making money whilst you sleep, you're going to be working for the rest of your life. All these phrases that are actually thrown around, they have some truth in them. If you are actively working to generate all your income, then you will be working for the rest of your life or until you have enough money to retire without actually having to work another day in your life. So how can we actually generate passive income? Before we get into this phase, I just wanna say, no income is truly passive because you have to do some work to generate income. If it was that easy where you just put money in and it's just passive forever, then you know that'd be beautiful, but that's not the case. The ways I'm actually focusing on investing my money a lot of my prop firm profits, a lot of my profits in general, I invest into index funds. So a lot of people say, oh, index funds, is, I don't want to make my profits 40 years, 50 years down the line. But there are a lot of ways you can actually do this, whether you invest in an ISA, which in the UK allows you to invest £20,000 per year, tax-free profits. A lifetime ISA, £4,000 per year. Again, you get an additional 25% for that deposit. So you're making 25% on your money immediately every single year so you put in 4k that's 5k every single year so that's amazing so those are obviously good for retirement because you can take them out at retirement age or you take them out before but you get heavily taxed on them but you take out retirement it's tax-free so you can live a nice life in retirement with all your index funds adding up to your profits or you could just invest into a gia you know general investing account which means that any profits you actually make will be taxed when you actually sell the stocks or index funds which again profit is profit you're going to get taxed on any profit or money you make in your life anyway so if you do make profit from investing passively then that is quite good the reason why i say this isn't truly passive is because if you want to compound your money you have to reinvest your dividends you have to buy the stocks every single month what i personally do is set up a standing order so every single month that money will be taken out of my account the reason i do this is that I'm not going to be reactive to price movements. So whether the S&P has reached an all-time high or it's reached new lows, it doesn't matter. I'm going to buy every single month at a set date. The way you can actually determine how much you're going to put into this is how much money you have left. So if you're making 50K per month from prop firms, after all expenses, you have 10K left, 
maybe put four or five K of this into investments. Or ideally, the more you put into investments, the sooner you can retire, the sooner you can live a life without having to worry about working actively. Because as we all know, trading is active income. With trading, we're going to have to work every single day until we have to retire because you're going to have to sit down at the charts, do your journaling, do your backtesting, do your trade management to actually make money. So if you don't have ways of making money passively, then you're going to be trading for the rest of your life unless you make loads of money and you can eventually retire, which is obviously the goal. We want to retire young. That's why we're actually getting into trading and business in the first place. Other ways of making money and investments that I feel like are really, really good. First one is property. You'll often see the richest people in the world own multiple, multiple pieces of property. I, I wouldn't even say multiple actually <laughs> puts into the right perspective. Let's say, for example, Saudi Arabia. A lot of people from Saudi Arabia, they own pretty much all of London. So they wouldn't buy all this property if it wasn't worth investing into. You know, in the UK, I think on average, the house price is double every 10 years. So if you buy a house now for 300k, on average, that'd be worth 600k in 10 years time. And this isn't mentioning the money you're going to receive every single month from rental income. So the tenants you actually have in your property are going to give you monthly income, which will then add up. And you could get to the stage where your monthly income from these rental properties is actually covering your expenses or your mortgage. So then you are, you're living for free. You technically, at that point, don't have to work another day in your life because it is passive income coming in every single month. However, the way that would make this truly passive is if you had to do absolutely nothing, but this isn't the case. You have to get payments from the tenants. Obviously, you could get estate agents or hire someone to actually manage all this. But again, it, it kind of makes it not passive. You also have to fix any issues with the house. So any problems maybe with the boiler or the roof or the fences, you know, this is your responsibility because you own the house. So you have to be mindful of this and not spend all of the money you actually have in your property business because you might end up with a house that you can't actually have a tenant in because you can't afford to fix it, which then would mean any income is completely gone. And moving on to the last way to actually invest your money, and I feel like this is currently the best way to actually do it. If you are making a lot of money from trading, I feel like this is a no brainer. And this is to set up a business. You know, I've got a new business coming out and you can see here the name of it, a little sneak preview. Um, so that's very exciting. But businesses are a great way to actually make money. You'll often see a lot of traders perform better when they have businesses that are going well behind the scenes. A lot of the time, boring businesses or boring businesses to most people are the businesses that actually make the most money and that are the most worthwhile to actually invest your money into. The reason being, a lot of boring businesses people need. So if you have something or you solve a problem that people are having or you sell something that people need in their everyday life, you can make so much money. Let's say, for example, t-shirts or toilet roll or bedding. You wouldn't think, oh, let me get into the bedding industry. No, you're not going to wake up in the middle of the night thinking, oh, how can I get into the bedding industry? You're not going to think that. But bedding is something everybody needs. T-shirts, everybody needs them because you can't just go around wearing a t-shirt. Well, not in the UK anyway. You will definitely freeze. But things that everyone needs or maybe problems that everyone has are quite easy to fix. If you have a problem in your life, it's there's probably a high chance that someone else in the world has that problem and probably more than one person if you're thinking globally. So if you can solve that, then people will probably pay you if you solve that problem well for them. So this is where you know software companies come into play, whether it's a software that writes your YouTube scripts or writes your helps you with your email marketing or your tweets, you know, all these simple things that people have to do but don't like doing can be solved relatively easily with software. And this is kind of the best avenue to go into because if you have money coming in monthly, cash flow every single month from these businesses with relatively high profit margins, you can scale to millions without having to put in a lot of work. You can still trade as your main income, employ people to run your other businesses, the boring businesses, and just scale massively. I also invest into watches. You know, right now we've got a GMT Master 2 Batman on. Uh, it's probably my favorite watch to wear actually, but you know, buy them retail for, you know, 8,000 pounds for a, a, an average date just, and the market value 12, 13,000, you know, four or five grand profit per watch if I was to sell them. But again, just easy ways to make money. 
watches, good investment. I'd rather have money in watches than just sat in the bank. I'd rather have money in index funds than sat in the bank. I'd rather have money in property than sat in the bank. Having money sat in the bank is good because it obviously gives you safety, gives you a safety net. But if that's not necessary for you, you have money saved up for six months of expenses, why not invest your money? Make the money work whilst you're sleeping instead of working, using your time to make money. That is the ultimate goal. So if anything in this video did help you, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you guys in the next episode.